All right, this is a first. Each week, we like to break down <laughs> stories from the three levels of government with CTV political commentator and dear friend of our show, Scott Reed. Scott, welcome to Agent Court. Well, thanks a lot. It sure <laughs> is luxurious here, boy. The big table, the yeah. bright lights. Now, Scott Mama, was, I made yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, Scott was here last week, but it's the first time all three of us were sat at the right. desk. So, yes, exactly. Yeah, all right. Uh, okay, let's start at the federal level because, I mean, huge story. Late breaker, sort of late last week, we see Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, a bit of an entourage, fly down to Maryland. Have a dinner with President elect Donald Trump. This, of course, all relates to the yeah. big tariff threats here. Good move, bad move. Is this helping sort of Canada's cause, I suppose? So it was just over a week that that tweet came out from Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. You know, we're now like three, four days since they had dinner at Mar-a-Lago. And I think, you know, the thing that we need to recognize is this still makes news and it's going to continue to make news, guys. And Here's what's interesting. Little bits and details are starting to bubble out. We know that they had meatloaf. I'm sure it was overly cooked. <laughs> um, we know that Trump actually had an iPad and was selecting the music for them as they were sitting there. Really? Yeah. Oh. Mixmaster DJT. Playing Leonard Cohen for the prime minister. Yeah. So evidently they had lots of discussions about mm -hmm. Hallelujah and the various many covers of it. Mm -hmm. However... I think what's most interesting is you're clearly hearing from the PMO little noises that they think between now and the 20th of January, which is the inauguration date, that they can make a play to actually get past these tariffs. That if they show a blitz of action on the border, maybe exit controls, more physical infrastructure, higher guards, controls with respect to asylum. If they can make action on that, their hope, their belief is possibly they could be spared the tariffs. We'll have to see. It's going to be a tall order, but already you're hearing that kind of talk out of the PMO. And I think it's really interesting to watch this unfold because, you know, many people are saying, well, why would the prime minister go down there on bended knee? Others are saying this is a diplomatic coup. And from my perspective, there is no more important file for the prime minister, for the premiers, for the country, and is going to continue to dominate our focus. Yeah, mm, yeah, absolutely. Okay, and Scott, turning to provincial government news, uh, the Ontario Auditor General, new one, uh, Shelley Spence, oh. she's got several Valley for Money mm. audits, uh, reports coming out today. We're talking Ontario Place, safe injection sites. Yeah. All of these big sticks of political dynamite. I don't think there's been a bigger stick of political dynamite for the Ford government than Ontario Place. Well, we moved immediately to close it. Why? Well, the roof was falling in. Then you get architects, the people who actually designed the building, say, that's not true. This thing is not going to collapse immediately. It could be repaired and maintained. Hmm. Clearly, the government wanted to move on it. The AG will be bringing forward independent scrutiny on all of that. My guess is watch that space. It's going to be politically uncomfortable for the government. I wouldn't even be surprised if we started hearing things like actually the expense of shutting it down was significant. Mm. This will be fodder for the opposition. This will be catnip for the likes of Marit Stiles and Bonnie Crombie. I expect to see Doug Ford on his back foot all day long. And it's clear as the party sort of pre prepare to get election ready how the attacks are getting sharpened by the opposition to Queen's Park right now too. Well, you know, I'm glad you brought it up because yeah. let's, let's, let's break format here for a second. The big buzz around Queen's Park uh -huh. is that the premier is second guessing the plan to have an early election. Really? Yeah. Wow. And so there's a lot of controversy in conservative land. Mm. Will they go? People were speculating in the end of February they would drop the writ, try to get it in before any chance mm. that the federal government might uh, collapse and we'd have a spring oh. election. <laughs> and now... I'm hearing buzz that maybe the premier is getting a little difficult to convince mm. uh, that he should go early. He's a little worried about how the public reacts. So watch that spot. That's going to be very interesting. That is interesting. Okay, the premier also reacting yesterday as uh, Metrolink CEO Phil Verser stepping down after seven years. He's not going to ever see the uh, opening of the Edmonton Crosstown, which of course has been delayed for will four I? or five years. <laughs> not sure any of us will at this point. It kind of feels that way. We know that. But you know there's going to be people looking to sort of get their pound of flesh out of him, sort of make their complaints yeah. and issues. Now does that kind of go away? Like, what, what's your assessment on this side of things? Because well, municipally, it's big. Well, this is the issue. This is technically a provincial issue in that mm -hmm. the province appoints uh, the CEO. And we heard the premier yesterday, Phil Verster, the CEO of Metrolinx, going on to a bigger, better job. We don't know exactly where yet, somewhere in the state, supposedly. Premier's praising him. Here's what I don't get. How is it that the premier can praise this guy and talk about how he did such an outstanding job, saved our bacon in so many ways? I live in the Avenue Ag area. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know that we've been waiting since the days of the Old Testament for this damn thing to run. <laughs> I'm positive that when Phil Verster leaves, it will not be by rail, right? So what yeah. is going on? Why is there a dissonance? And I expect it will be municipal leaders who really put it on the grill. Mm -hmm. Because one thing nobody has gotten, the you know, municipal leaders haven't gotten, local councillors, city hall, and most importantly, those of us who live in the city. We've never gotten an explanation as to why these delays. What technically has gone wrong? Mm -hmm. In 
Is it Verster's fault as a matter of management? Is it that there have been operational challenges that are so overwhelming, no, no human could overcome them? Mm. What exactly has gone on? Mm. All we know is that he's leaving and the trains are not rolling. And I think yeah. you know, people are going to be asking for a bigger explanation, and that will start with the city. Yeah, we'll be watching for that. Some transparency would be helpful. I, you yeah. know, I want to look at that train window and see what's not going by. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you do stations. have a way with yeah. words, Scott. Yeah. Always entertaining. Thanks so much, and I Thanks, guess we'll guys. chat with you next week. Thanks we will for see you here. soon. Sounds good. See you, Scott.